how do you make sure that your brand is relevant for future fashion landscape in this video series we are learning branding techniques adopted by internationally known indian brands so we have our expert mr anirudh birla who is considered to be india's king maker marketer Anirudh we all know that fashion landscape is so dynamic you know trends change every day and brands have to offer something new to a customer i have seen there are two kinds of brands one that has done good for a couple of years and then they fade off and then another who have flourished throughout year for so many decades your brand is a great example of an indian brand who have flourished through 20 years so what is your secret i mean how do you make sure that your brand is relevant for future fashion landscape so i feel that mpm is going to be more and more relevant going into the future because the thought behind the mpm was always to have more value for money more versatility uh, a more relaxed lifestyle a transitional lifestyle um we speak to that entire concept of being transitional and we are going as we go ahead we are going to do that more and more and you will see that in a few uh, months maybe even a year so one of the reasons why i think amtm will remain relevant is everything from a very microscopic lens now that we are looking at our purpose in a more refined manner we are looking at why we exist we are looking like who do we exist for for example are we existing for the woman who wants to attend a wedding or are we existing for the woman who is just wanting to get through a day looking stylish but yet relaxed feeling appropriate so we are just looking at things in that very different perspective now we are questioning everything that we are doing we are questioning every silhouette that we are making and we are making sure that it is a lot more functional than it already was so we are probably one of the few brands who probably probably put pockets in everything and we are also one of the few brands who have sizes from an extra small all the way to a double xl and uh, we are looking at all of those things and we are making sure that we are as we go forward we are available for everyone that we are inclusive in our own way going forward of course we are going to be talking a little more about how to be mindful we have to treat people with that intelligence and we have to treat people uh, with the assumption that they know and that the brand then inculcates it and, and just provides a solution so i don't think we want to become preachers that's not something that ampm ever wants to do i think we are just part of the social fabric just like anybody else and we just want to give and keep pace with what is happening around the world so in that sense relevance will always remain so i think people have realized that in during the pandemic that they don't need to go to an x place and only work from there they're working as efficiently from their home i think ampm is right up there to provide the solutions uh, for such a lifestyle like i said the transitional lifestyle that people are now adapting to they can go from a work meeting and take a flight to goa and and you know they're there for the weekend so who's who is to say that okay you always have to change no maybe maybe the same outfit takes you from from delhi to goa and you know you're looking at uh landing there and still looking appropriate so you know that is the sort of uh conversation we want to have as we go forward that is the sort of product we want to provide as we go forward and that is the sort of uh, consumer that we're looking at as we go forward and what is the role of marketing in a fashion brand i think what kind of jobs are assigned to them and tell me why they are always paid in the highest bracket creative people have their own strengths and weaknesses like everybody does right and one of the things that they do really well is design and create and get inspired and they have a uniqueness to their voice and uh they are able to do that really well for that to happen they need time and then they need um some solace and they need inspiration and they need to travel around the world and they need to get inspired and you know so a lot of people uh, who are creative are able to do all of that but does that translate into making sure that everybody knows about them about what they're doing about the story that they want to tell how they want to tell it some people are just not natural storytellers so i think it is the job of the marketing and the branding teams to be able to bottle all of that into a conversation into a story and 
then actually present it properly to the audiences that are going to be the growth driving functions for those organizations. So hence that role becomes very, very imperative or rather it's empirical because this is someone who's first looking inwards and understanding what their creative directors, what the brand, what the designers are looking at saying and what they really want to say, what do they really, really mean? Because sometimes it can just be missed and the nuance has to be picked out. It has to be listened to differently. It has to be then and then you have to communicate it to an audience, right? So you have to do, you're the in-between and you have to do both parts. You have to listen and then you have to communicate and you have to make sure that the translation hasn't been lost, that it hasn't gotten diluted in the wrong manner, that it has been filtered and refined and presented properly. So it is a very, very complicated job, but uh, it is something which is then also extremely imperative for any of them. So even with experience and the creation of experience within the brand, the marketing team plays actually a very crucial role. Um, one of the things that is ideally required to be done is that the marketing team works very closely with the creative head and the creative team to just understand what is it. So, so you know, the creative, the creative head basically creates a world for the brand in their head, but it needs to get manifested in the real world. That is the reason that marketing teams exist because they have to get into the head and they have to understand the world and the universe that they want to create for the brand and then actually manifest it in the way that is going to be palatable to an audience and in a way that is that doesn't dilute the essence of what they created in their head and what they imagined this to be. So these are various facets that a marketing um, function is very, very imperative to. And of course, that experience not only has to be manifested, it has to be maintained, sustained, uh, communicated, it has to evolve. So all of those things keeping pace with what is happening. That is the job of a marketing team. So when we say marketing, actually marketing has uh, two different roles. There's branding and then there's marketing, but it all just sort of gets overarched into one uh, department. But I feel that both are equally important and that people must, as, as at least fashion fashion firms, should look at them separately and co-join them. They co-join at the hip, but they're still two different functions. And I think that is where uh, the difference between just a retail brand and a and an actual luxury brand is a fine line somewhere in the line in the in the sand that they can draw. Yes, marketing teams do have very much to have that role uh, to play when it comes to retail, when it comes to sales, when it comes to choosing where you want to retail, etc. But I think it is it is important that people take that feedback, take that information, sit with the teams internally, and then come up with a wholesome solution. So it could be that I would want to open, say, in Khan Market. And whereas the designer vision might not be that, it might not be high street at all. So somewhere uh, that vision piece has to be aligned on. So hence, even though the importance is that, yes, a marketer will be able to give a nuance that, okay, no, maybe at this point of time, our brand does need to be here because this is where you get the maximum footfall. This is where you get maximum eyeballs. This is how the brand will become popular if you're in that stage. So where the brand is, where they are in that journey, how to look at it, how to make sure that you're taking the right decision at the right time, taking all that feedback and that information and just looking at it in a little more pragmatic manner and then aligning with the creative team. All of this has to happen before you actually decide that, okay, am I going to open the store here? Am I going to open the store there? Is this part of my bigger detail strategy? Am I just supposed to be in Emporio or am I supposed to be in Emporio and Palladium and Ubi City? Or am I supposed to be in High Street Market? So all of that has to be seen in a much more, um, in, a, in a strategic, in a high level manner before you actually take that call. So the marketing function actually is a part of every conversation within the within the company or the organization. It is part of the creative process even because the, the feedback system has to flow both ways. Now, for example, we are the ones who are standing at the stores and actually interacting with the customers. We are the ones who are uh, behind the social media platforms. We are the one who is listening to social chatter. We are the ones who are, who are listening to comments and, and responding to them. So it is very important that we have that channel interact with the creative channel because a creative channel also cannot function in, in, a, in a silo. They can't just make whatever the hell they want and not understand what is also a sort of requirement for uh, the day. And I think the marketing function is very key there. This is my example on how we work. So when Priyanka comes up and her team comes up with an inspiration, right? it sort of starts there. I'm pulled in to first be presented the mood board, the initial inspiration mood board, 
that this is the direction that we wanted to take this is the conversation that we wanted to have this is the inspiration for the season and it is first tested on me i'm the guinea pig right so i'm the guinea pig outside of the department who comes in and hears that and gives the first reaction that okay oh this sounds very exciting or maybe we should add this or maybe you know this is something that that it seems that like we've done before so you know it could be any range but that is how i'm involved there so that is i think the first step then i get called in when the 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 samples start coming out right and uh, the samples don't come out magically on day one it's not like the, oh you know all 100 are ready so it's a process right so it's months of work and we meet nearly every week to gauge and assess that uh, what has happened what is the design team come up with when we see it on a on a on a rack and we we see whether this is looking good not looking good are we missing something of course before that we've also made a range plan for them so the marketing team uh, heads the sort of merchandising team and we make the range plan in a way that okay these are the sort of things based on our analysis based on feedback from previous seasons these are the things that we can look at making these are the things that we can repeat in terms of silhouette or in terms of you know a category and these are the things that might now be coming in for example masks is a whole new category so uh, are we doing enough are we doing more are we wanting to do more so all of those things get encapsulated in a range plan which is worked on with both the design and the marketing team together because of course design has a thought going forward that this is what they want to say this is what they want to do so we have to incorporate all of that and then the range plan gets made then comes the presentations of the samples and that is where i'm also called in and i see the 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 design from a marketing perspective you know the teams are there and they need to be told and they need to be enthused even after if something's not worked so those course corrections happen during a season so every week or every month uh, those course corrections are continuously happening and then of course the time comes when the product is ready and then it has to be communicated to the customer and so all the visual imagery all that process begins um so basically we the marketing team is the one that handles the shoots the campaign so after the design process is complete then the handovers happen to the production teams where they then start taking forward uh, but then they have to be uh, advised on quantities so because merchandising at this moment lies with marketing to an extent to a large extent um, we are also the buying team for the product this for the sample that have come out and the buying happens and then of course the orders are written so it, so we basically work like this so that the the production unit is not like flying blind so you know it it's very important because we analyze okay that this is what sold this is what sold more these are the reason that we could come up with our store teams come they actually see the range that uh, you know that 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 uh, is presented by the design team they given their feedback and so we take all that feedback we bottle it we filter it we analyze it and then we uh, place the orders accordingly with the production team what that means by what i mean by placing an order is that for example there is style x in color y so we are going to make sure that style x in color y is a three pieces or 30 pieces depending on how we think it's going to move so that is how a buying order is placed and i'm saying an order is placed it's internal when it is placed with the production team because the production team's job is to take the sample take the buying order and then produce it their job is not to think about how much are we going to produce so that is not a part of their job that is a part of the merchandising team's job so even when we are placing an order of course there is a science behind it um there is you have to look at the channel that you're working with how many stores do you have uh how many days this collection is going to be on the rack how many sqs you're going to be uh, you know selling during this time what are the drops that are going to happen uh, you know you might be you might be dropping 20 designs first in the store then followed by 30 then followed by 10 so it could be a whole different you know mathematics when you change a certain thing then you know everything has to also sit well together so it it can't be that you know that you're taking five pieces from a different capsule and ten pieces from a different capsule and sort of mishmashing them and putting in the store we're very particular about that so we make sure that you know certain capsules um which have certain colorways and you know so we have a whole process behind that i mean if i get into it it's, it's very very it's very long i have to go into details but it's it's very in depth but the point being what the the point being is that the merchandising role at that time is very important because then we're also responsible of making sure that it sells and we get the certain sell throughs during that time during a season and you don't want to be stuck with a stock uh which is then going to go on end of season sale and then you endlessly you know selling things on discount because that's not a not that's not the brand that you wanted to create so hence that role becomes a key that you make sure that you have the right numbers right feedback right analysis and the right orders are placed with the production team of course sometimes we don't know what's going to be a hit so we find that um, 
we've launched the 20 styles and out of them three have sold in the in the first week itself now what do you do uh, that's a call also that then comes back to us do we want to produce more of the same style or do we want to let the others breathe and sell so those are things that then we have to consider uh, once facing reorders or not facing them and you know and the timeline that it'll take to make more of those styles so then after we get the production going um, we then start looking at how to tell that story visually because fashion is a very visual medium and it is very important that uh, you know that story to be, is told correctly it, it doesn't get diluted that that whole manifestation happens and in the best possible manner so hence um, it is up to the marketing team to ideate come up with locations come up with models come up with the story come up with the team and then make sure that all of that also logistically get executed and in a budget so all of those things are then handled by the marketing team we, we are the ones who present the concept uh, that this is this is you know this is what we put together and then we present it to the creative directors and then they either agree or they want certain tweaks so all of that is but the responsibility solely lies with the marketing team that you know that it, it happens um, that it will finally executed including lookbooks because we of course are also online and uh, lookbooks and the lookbook shoots that happen are very much used digitally because our partners uh, which are external to AMPM are also using those images and it represents the brand in ways and to audiences which are much much larger than the ones that are seeing our campaign alone so all of that has to be then done for this collection that we have you know right like i said started with right from the beginning and then the story has to be told uh, and then it has to be not only just created the content is then created and then it is disseminated into the media you're speaking to them then pr comes into play and uh, then social media is in play and then there is the customer relationship management so all of this i know it's sounding a little crazy now because marketing is uh, a massive function like i said uh, for any organization it is very very imperative so these are the various roles that all fall under this one team and i think that sort of answers why we are so important so <laughs> Hope that you were able to learn some valuable insights on how to create a fashion brand. But the information is yet not complete. Please look at the next videos to understand other trade secrets and finer nuances of fashion branding. And that is all for now. I'll be meeting you again in the next video.